How's it going Teal Boys? It is week six. We are going on the road to play at Ole Miss, who is ranked number 22nd in the nation and is two and two on the season. We need to bounce back. Two and three currently, uh, and they are not a good three losses. Uh, games that we should have won. NC State will discount. We got slaughtered there, but we should have been able to beat BYU and we choked against Georgia Tech. So we're looking definitely to bounce back. It won't be an easy one. Ole Miss is no slouch of a team. Their losses so far this season are to a number five Florida and a number 21 Alabama. Uh, the two teams that they beat, though, not the best. A one in four Tennessee and a one in three Vanderbilt. So maybe a little bit of a chance for us. Uh, Lee Corso is going to be in their corner. So that's not useful. We're minus 11 on our turnover differential through five games. If we turn that around the rest of the season, I think that we're going to be looking a little bit better. But of course, we got to go through our recruiting and take a look at ESPN before we get through the game. Um, I think we have one player to scout. It's a wide receiver. Um, we're going to be a long ways behind him, but he could be pretty solid. Brian Terry is a 71 overall wide receiver. Definitely fine with that. Looks to be more of a possession guy. 68 cash in traffic isn't the best, but got good route running and he's not super slow. And I do have some bad news. Michael May, the guy that we want to be our quarterback of the future, fast, can throw, can catch, can run, you know, all that jazz. Uh, we are, you know, clawing our way back in 15 points a week, which is okay. And maybe we could unlock ourselves, but a lot of guys or, or a lot of teams offering scholarships and look at five teams already with visits. That might be enough for uh, us to be out of the running for Michael May, which is a really, really big shame. There are two guys that we can set up visits for, though. Robert Gray and Rashad Howard, center and tackle. We want them to do good. Um, we were sending guys to the Virginia Tech game. I'm going to continue to do that. I think that that's one that we can win, and it's one that we need to win. And I don't want to send them to the Miami game because Miami is the defending national champions. So with our remaining 100 points this week in the recruiting, we're going to give a scholarship offer to Jared Robinson, the defensive end, who is 72 overall. We're in the lead with him. And then we're going to go down to our another quarterback that we're kind of interested in, that pocket passer in Mike Harris. Uh, he's not necessarily the best player that we've seen. He doesn't necessarily fit our offense. What with his 59 speed and 70 acceleration, but he can throw the ball pretty well, and that could be very useful for us. And now that I think about it, we can actually definitely take some points away from guys. Uh, Will Phillips, this middle linebacker, uh, I don't think he needs any points. We're going to give him just 100 just to make sure that we continue to progress, but that'll free up some stuff, and so I guess we'll be able to go down to the bottom of the board and give out a bunch of points from these uh, players that were high up on the board. All right, so we've given our points away. I do want to check early on top classes. Uh, we don't have any recruits yet, but it always is interesting to see who snags a player early. Texas A&M, Georgia, and Bama already have a five-star committed, and TCU has seven guys already. A four-star, four threes, a two, and a one. That's, that's a lot of players to be committed this early in the season. How about ESPN? I believe there wasn't really anything interesting that we saw uh, in the rankings. There was like one ranked matchup or maybe uh, zero ranked matchups this week. So hopefully we can upset our ranked opponent. Uh, but how about the Heisman standings? Is our boys still up there? Reese White does stay at that fourth spot. He had only 93 yards and a touchdown in the last game. We'd like to continue to feed him, but we need to make sure that we're holding onto the ball and not, you know, getting turnovers and losing possessions. If we're going to have any sort of chance there. So we will go ahead and head on the road to, what is it, Oxford. 93 overall for Ole Miss with a 95 offense and a 92 defense is bad news. Uh, we've learned that the all-white uniforms aren't a good luck charm for us. So we're going to go with the teal pants. And can we try the black helmet? Maybe something like that will work for us this time around. And... Ole Miss for sure. We're going to let them wear like the uh, the all powder blues, I think, because that is fantastic. Um, what pants do they have? We're going to go with that white, but no stripe. But for sure, the powder blues, such a fantastic uh, uniform for them. 
Let's just hope that we can beat them while they're wearing it. So Ole Miss has supposedly a pretty decent running game, but doesn't pass the ball a whole lot, at least so far this season. Very mediocre defense. We already know all of our problems. Oh, no. Their running back is a 99 overall guy. 81 carries, 574 yards, and four touchdowns on the season. That's going to be kind of painful. And then their next two best players are a free safety and a defensive tackle. I hate that. How about injuries? Oh! Oh, their quarterback out with a bruised knee. I'm going to assume that Tisdale is their starter. So we have arrived in Mississippi for this game. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of teal in the uh, stands this game, but that's fine. Maybe we can thrive under the pressure as we lose the toss, but we will start with the football. So Grant Tisdale, the starting quarterback for Ole Miss, is out injured. This game, he's a 91 overall. Their backup will have to play, and their backup's only an 81 overall. As Reese White breaks free, running down the sidelines. I don't think he's going to have the speed, but the man in the Heisman watch list steps out of bounds, but gives us great field position to open up this game. Had I not stepped out of bounds, I think we start this drive inside the red zone, but hopefully that doesn't matter. Starting inside the 25 at least, we will get a yard on the ground on first down. I have a feeling that this rush defense is going to be very solid, but we're going to continue to go at him and hope for the best. Reese loses a yard, and we've got a third and ten. Remember, I don't think we can kick a field goal from this distance. So after two plays, we are right back where we started. We are going to go to the air. Hopefully somebody's open. Maybe square over the middle. That's going to be a tough throw. Bedgood catches it, but he's short of the line again. I had to run back towards the, the ball to make sure that we caught that one. And we'll come out on this fourth and two with a risky decision. Grayson McCall on the QB sneak from two yards out. <laughs> dives for it. Oh, wow. He dove right into a linebacker and took a shot, but was able to pick up the first down. So again, a fantastic start to this game. We'll try the read option. Got to continue to run the ball as much as possible. Reese gets the handoff, and he's going to pick up eight yards on the carry to get inside the five-yard line. Second and two, and we can still pick up a first down on this, which is fantastic. We're going to run the dive up the middle. Reese, well, gets us that first down. And now I think we're just going to try the fullback dive. Actually, who am I kidding? We're going to give it to Reese. He's on the Heisman watch list. We got to give him those touchdowns. The offensive line does a great job, and we're going to score first in this game. Oh, my goodness. Arkansas State upsets number three Auburn in the Tigers lose their first game of the season if we manage to beat Ole Miss now our upset won't look as impressive <laughs> I'm fine with that though I like seeing uh top teams lose as we do a decent job on the kick coverage so the offense was able to get it done on the first drive as this backup quarterback comes in to run the option on first down and oh my gosh he's not that quick but he picked up 16 yards we're going to have to blitz a lot here to try to stop this running back, I think, is, oh, there's a broken tackle. He's got a lot of, he just trucked a man for no reason. A lot of room to work with. He gets 21 yards. Hopefully this quarterback isn't too good of a passer because we will need to bring that pressure constantly as he has a man over, oh, wide open over the middle. Not even close to being contested. Is this going to be one of those games where we have zero chance? That's stopping the uh, the defense or the, their offense, I, th I mean. Hopefully not. We do manage to get the stop on first down. They go in the hurry up. They hand it off again out towards the edge. This running back has all the room in the world. And Jerry and Ely, eh, ooh, it's going to be rough if he continues to run this well all game long. All right. Well, they tied it up much quicker than I would have hoped. Both teams with a score on the board. Less than halfway through this first quarter. Oh my gosh, what an absolute pancake that we just saw on the return team there. Now let's just hope that we can continue to move the football. Grayson McCall's going to keep it. He's definitely losing yards. They were way too prepared for that play. We're going to have to go to the air on second and 13. Looking for Reese White. Uh, he might not be open. Bad throw from Grayson. It's third and long again. I don't like that we keep getting in these situations. All right, third and 13. We've got to go to the air. And there's Malden, who's open. Just enough on the out route for the first down. 
It's a very useful uh, catch that he just made. Handing this one off to Reese. He's going to get a yard. Their running game, or their run defense, I should say, is very good. Hopefully we can just continue to be stubborn enough for it to work. As second and nine, we're going to hand it off. Reese, good spin move to keep his momentum going forward. And, uh, wow, that was good. This is not likely to be a high yardage game for Reese, but he might be able to make enough impact plays for us to potentially win. As he gets six there, he's got like eight carries and 28 yards. So we're going to hope that the uh, continuous running kind of opens up passing lanes if we need them. But, I mean, if he can average this three and a half to four yards a carry, that'll work just fine. We're coming out five wide to throw on this first down. And uh, I don't feel comfortable making a throw there. We're just going to get rid of the ball before we take a big sack. This Ole Miss team definitely has the skill advantage over us as we do... Almost throw a pick. I thought Dion was going to turn a little bit sooner. We are lucky not to have turned the ball over. Worst thing about that play is it brings us to another third and ten. We'll step back to pass over the middle. Malden. Oh, can't even get to the ball. The linebacker stepped in front of it, and it's fourth and long. Well, this might seem foolish, but we're going to go for it. Trying to get Grayson outside the pocket. Uh, I see nobody, so we're just going to just throw it. Was, it honestly would have been better if they intercepted that, but their coverage is suffocating. So an unfortunate turnover on downs is going to force us to come back out on defense, and we still can't tackle. Nobody on this team can, apparently. Oh, this is not going to go well. The worst part about all this is that I have to continue to respect their running game because their running back is incredible. I got burned there, but Diggs dropped an interception. Come on, Aaron. Get some hands, man. I don't want to know the number of dropped interceptions Aaron Diggs has so far this season because I know it'll just make me angry as we do have them in a third down, but it's third and two. We're going to bring the blitz on this third down, which doesn't work. And over the middle, of course, is a man wide open. And of course, he broke a tackle. How bad can this team possibly be at tackling? These are wide receivers that are just shrugging off our attempts. Ole Miss takes the lead. And oh my gosh, we need to take the program back and just uh, end its miserable existence. If we can't tackle, we can't play football. Well, there's another upset as number 19, Virginia Tech. Loses to Wake Forest. That's a team that uh, we are scheduling all, all our visits for. All right. Reese, what do you got for us on the return? We need something because the offense can't move well enough and the defense isn't going to give us enough, enough attempts. That time we don't step out of bounds as we try the juke and we get to the 41-yard liner. Somewhere around there. It feels like they're bringing pressure, so we're going to try a four verts. I know that we don't often have guys get open, but maybe Tyson Mobley can... Well, have an attempt to come down with that. Good job from the linebacker again. Grayson McCall is only two of eight so far on the day uh, passing the football. That's not great. Thankfully, Reese can make up for some of the passing deficiencies on the ground, but maybe not enough. That's going to be the uh, end of our first quarter. Not a great start for us. Uh, good first drive, but the second drive was atrocious and the defense is non-existent. So now we get a deal with a third down. Oh, Tyson running away from that. I think Dion Fountain could be open here. Beautiful. Great route. A lot of running room to work with. The back juke works for maybe another five as he got two guys to miss. And Dion continues to be one of our better targets through the air. Well, we're going to continue to pass a little bit. Grayson might have our circle open. It is Dion Fountain who ran away from a man. Wow, broke the tackle, made a guy miss with the move, and Grayson's injured, so Fred Payton's going to have to come in for a couple of plays. I'm really hoping that that's not a big injury. We're going to open this one up with a read option where Reese is going to get the carry, and he's going to pick up seven. Fred again handing this ball off, second and three, giving it to Reese, who got a little bit more. We have a third and short to work with, and I was waiting for the game maybe to pop it up for me but it won't Grayson McCall has a dislocated shoulder so he's done for the rest of the, the day which means unfortunately we have to rely on Fred Payton for this game third and one the run up the middle the blocking was fantastic we have a first and goal inside the five and a chance now to tie this game up oh wow 
One of Ole Miss's players has broken their wrists, so they're out for the season. We're fortunate that we don't have that many problems, and ooh, my first pass with Fred did not go as intended. Second and goal, I'm gonna look to hand this one off, but they are kind of stacked up over the center. We're gonna try it anyways, the dive. Fred, oh, tried to bounce it towards the edge, but the linebacker came up, came up to make the play, and it's third and goal here inside the five. I don't necessarily think this is a great idea, but we're gonna try it anyways. The counter now on third and goal. Fred made a man, or uh, sorry, Fred handed it off. Reese made a man miss, and he found the end zone. So, what is that, his second rushing touchdown of the game? We tie it up, but uh, I think we're going to have to go with onside kicks for the rest of this one. I just don't think our defense is going to get a stop, so we're going to try to steal a possession away from them eventually. At some point in this game is the hope. Um, and in the meantime, I guess we're just going to give their offense a little bit less field to work with. If the defense wants to prove me wrong, that would be fine. Um, yep, this is a run to the right. We, we've already seen this option. We call or we stopped it. Well, we didn't stop it. They picked up a ton on the ground. But it was obvious what the play was. So we are able to stop it this time. Second and nine, maybe expecting a handoff. And it does get put on the ground. And oh, wow. The, <laughs> what do we do when it's a designed handoff? Ely is near unstoppable in that situation. We have to jump the uh, snap perfectly like that to get a stop. My hope is that plays like that back them up so that they're forced to throw and maybe we can get a stop uh, that way. But my gosh, dude, the crossing routes have been wide open all game long and they score way too easily. The backup quarterback is now 5 of 6 through the air. Uh, should have had an interception, but Aaron Diggs can't catch, so um, he's he's lucky and he's got himself a touchdown there. Reese with a bad kick return. Uh, leaves us with three minutes left in the half. Got to go into halftime tied up here. I would prefer not having to pass the ball much on this drive, but if we have to rely on Fred's arm, we, you know... There's not much we can do. Thankfully, Reese picks up three on that first down. We'll try the play action on second and seven. And there is a guy open. Malden burned his man. Got us 18 yards. I will absolutely take that. We're going to bring Malden in motion now. Try to get us a little bit of extra blocking. And he does actually pick up the block that would have stuffed us in the backfield and allows us to pick up three yards on the play. Nearing midfield, nearing two minutes to play in the half. I think this is where we start to go into a hurry up. So we're just going to try to move this ball quick. DJ Johnson with a good seven yard catch. And Fred hopefully can show what he's made of on this drive. Uh, X is open. There's Malden again. Oh my gosh, he almost made two guys miss on that juke. Gets us a first down. And I think that we're going to try to run the ball here just to continue to keep Reese involved in the offense. I think that's best case scenario for us. Second and eight now. A uh, quick throw to Malden. Of course, he holds on to it. I thought that was going to be picked, but it works for 12. And this drive is now moving very quick. We'll give the ball to Reese before potentially taking a timeout or, yeah, just taking a little breather. That one did not work how I expected it to. Second and 11, we're going to run the counter, except... Look at their defense. Two guys to guard three, potentially. Bring Mobley over the middle. Malden a little bit more straight. And Malden. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Bedgood came down with it, though. Oh, my gosh. I am so lucky that we caught that. Unfortunately, it makes it third and five, and uh, we need to pick this up. Uh, there's a chance that Mobley's wide open here. Ready to throw that way. He's not. We'll go outside the pocket and throw it up. I thought Bedwood was running towards us, but he like took another step out of bounds. So that gives us a uh, fourth and five to deal with, which I am not happy about. Put Malden on the out route. He's been pretty automatic catching the ball, and we'll see if our guys are open on the easy routes. Uh, DJ Johnson, who just caught a pass, is actually out for the game with a broken toe, and there's Tyson Mobley into the end zone. We just need to stop them from scoring in these remaining 33 seconds, but we've got a tie ball game once again. So while I want to kick an onside kick, that's not going to make any sense. So we'll have Frederick uh, put this one down field. They're going to field it at about the two. And the, or the special teams needs to get a stop. Mackey does get there eventually. 
Oh, the defense needs to hold badly here. Got to say, I'm pretty impressed with what Fred Payton has done so far passing the ball as Mackey. Yeah, we just wait for that one and find the running back after only a gain of one. We knew the play was coming. We were easily to, able to stop it. They were forced to take their first time out. 23 seconds now as, again, Mackey is just there to find the running back, and that's their second time out taken. I feel like they're not playing this all that well, but 20 seconds. We'll see if we can hold them again as over the middle they do go back to the running back again and he's got enough for that first down the hope for me right now is that we can just uh slow them down enough that they're not in field goal range is over the middle they go straight back to ely and the running back catches it but they're going to be forced to take their final timeout, and we will see a very very long field goal attempt five seconds on the clock this would be impressive if they hit it. Otherwise, we have a chance on the return, and it will be fielded by Reese White. Clock expires. I don't know if he's going to have the speed. Diving tackles to force him out of bounds. Maybe took a bad angle on that one. Um, Goodness. We get to go into the locker room tied up. We're going to come out with an onside kick, and hopefully at some point we can steal a possession because our defense has been very suspect so far in this uh, first half. Frederick, not the greatest attempt the last time out. This one's a little bit low on power as well. Right up into Gregory's hands. They have great field position to start this third quarter, but we kind of expected that anyways. So one of the things I really don't want them to do is just to demolish us uh, running the ball. So we're going to continue to bring these blitzes and hopefully shut down Ely. Two wide receivers to either side. I'm using alignment. Apparently, they're running the screen. I wasn't really able to get over there, and this guy is literally untackable. Oh, my gosh. It's a struggle on every single attempt as this is going to be a play action. Burned the crap out of me. I absolutely thought, uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I thought that we were going to run it. This dude can't be tackled. We're on conservative tackling. We can't stop these guys to save our lives. They score less than a minute. What is that? Less than 40 seconds off the clock. The worst part about a game like this is that it leaves us no room to make a mistake. And we all know that I am very likely to do uh, exactly that. A lot of mistakes coming from me. Let's see if it happens on this drive or not. It certainly doesn't help that uh, our starting quarterback is out injured, but theirs is gone as well. So kind of levels things out a little bit. Let's just hope that maybe it's a little bit more leaning in our favor with the quarterback situation. Reese is wide open. That's going to be at least a first down. And we are moving the ball, but we got to stay consistent with it. Fred Payton now 7 of 9. So he started the game much better than Grayson did uh, throwing the ball. Uh, and our running game is okay. I'm just hoping that it can be consistent. Ooh, I don't feel necessarily comfortable running the option on that, so we're just going to go designed handoff to Reese. The blocking there was fantastic, and he got enough for the first down. I haven't expected the running game to do as well as it has, but I'm certainly pleased with it. Triangles open. There's Tyson Mobley, and another first down right off the bat on that set of downs. And every time those pass plays work for us, it's going to start to open things up more on the running game. It looks like they want to bring pressure, though. Let's see. Can we bring uh, or, or throw something deep? The pressure kind of there. X is open. Malden holds onto it through the contact. He's almost automatic. And I got to say, I don't think they should sh show their hand. It usually doesn't work out all that well for them. Reese on the handoff up the middle gets eight more. Man, neither defense having a great game so far. We potentially could have Dion Fountain in the end zone. Uh, that's not how I wanted that to work. There we go. I want him to get jammed up at the line because there's no safety back there. If Fountain gets past his man, it could be a touchdown. Dion came down with it in the end zone. What a catch and what a throw from Fred Payton, the backup. He's 10 of 12. He found uh, the end zone there. Oh my goodness gracious. I am so glad I was able to call what was about to happen there. That doesn't happen often for me. Uh, another 
Mm. Onside kick picked up by Gregory, who we know is a monster. And I've got a bit of a hope so far in this game that uh, maybe our defense not being on the field all that often is going to be big for us. Uh, we are winning the time of possession battle, so maybe they'll be fresh for the fourth quarter. Our coverage just uh, isn't quite there. On this first down, they'll step back to pass again, and look at that, Mingo wide open. Oh my gosh, cannot be tackled. And they score incredibly quickly again. <laughs> our defense is atrocious against these guys. It feels like our defense came straight from the local high school, which is not great. First and 10, we're going to try the read option. I don't feel great about it because it is Fred Payton keeping the ball, but we'll slide down. We don't want to go to our third string quarterback, and that was an easy six yards. Good news is the offensive line has been doing pretty good. Fred Payton is starting to really heat up, and Reese on this dive play is going to get enough for the first down. My hope is that every single play that our uh, offense gets to be on the field is a useful one for us as this is a tough throw. Bedgood should have had that. That should have been completed easily. I think there were a couple of other throws that we could have made, but they seemed a little bit too difficult. So instead, what we're going to do here is motion uh, Tyson Mobley over and try to run this read option it's going to be a handoff to reese who oh my gosh gets us in a great spot in fact pretty much picks up the first down so he's got us to a third and inches and we're going to come out and run jj bar go with the fullback dive and yeah it'll be enough to get us a fresh set of downs to work with try to continue our running onslaught on this one as oh my gosh the blocking is incredible reese Got 17 yards on the play. If he was a little bit quicker, that might have been a touchdown. But, uh, man, the uh, the gap that was created in front of him was massive. Not quite big enough to drive a truck through. But, you know, you might be able to fit a smart car in that space. Keeping it here, we uh, continue to run. Reese gets six more on the option. We'll throw one up on second and four now. And, oh, no, that's a pick, isn't it? Gosh, darn it. Well, there's the mistake that lost us the game. Uh, if I threw that earlier, it's completed, but I just waited too long. And uh, there's our first turnover of the game. We knew it was coming. We just had to guess when. It's all a shame that we can't tackle as well as they can. It's also a shame that we can't uh, hold on to the football just as well. Defense needs to get a stop here. Nothing else will do as... Uh, oh, my gosh. How the hell did he get six yards out of that play? We hit him in the backfield. His strength was enough to break a tackle with his stiff arm and then get a bunch of stiff arm cheese on another one. There's two more broken tackles. This is just ridiculous. It's almost impossible how consistent these guys are. Bringing the blitz, we leave a man wide open, but he steps out of bounds. So thankfully, a little bit of a stop and a breather for the defense. We've got these guys in this second and 10. I'm expecting a pass. Yeah, they will go to the air. Guys open. A couple of guys open. We got a sack. How did he lose eight yards as Sidney McRae finally got there? Fought through the block. Actually, he didn't have a whole lot of opposition. Quarterback just didn't throw it. I'm sure he had somebody open, but that is fantastic news. And it's going to be the end of the third quarter here for us. We're down a touchdown, but it's third and long. We have a chance to get the stop and, and maybe tie it up again. Big third down for us. We desperately need this to work out in our favor. If we give up this first down, it's going to be almost impossible to come back from. That's best news possible. They throw it short. Fourth and seven. The defense finally holds. It's a shame it came after a turnover of our own. So I expect their punter to be pretty good, but Reese is back to return. Clutch drive coming up here. Never mind, the punter kind of shanked it. Um, I mean, he could have done better, but we'll get it at about the 25, I think. And it's even better than I had hoped. We get it at the 29. With five and a half minutes left in this game, we will see the offense come out and try to hold on to the ball. At this point, I'm kind of hoping that we can go to overtime because I just don't expect the defense to get another stop. So if that's what we have to settle for, it's... What we have to settle for, Fred Payton, showing a little bit of quickness, gets to the edge and gets 14 yards. Man, the running game has been phenomenal uh, so far in this game. Much better than I anticipated as it just continues to just churn out yards. Reese might only have two touchdowns on the game, but the yards are coming 
often as Fred will keep this one, and that's going to be enough for another first down on the ground. I'm hoping that somebody gets open on this one. We'll go with the play action. Looking to get outside the pocket. Circle's going to be wide open. Bedgood comes down with it in the red zone. It was a little bit less open than I anticipated, but still found 22 yards on the play. The play action has been our bread and butter in the passing department so far this game. I got to hope it continues for the rest of the quarter. Uh, Reese gets five yards on that first down. And I'm not going to lie here. I'm getting a little bit worried about the clock. I want this to work well. I didn't mean to motion anybody, so let's bring Malden back. We need the blockers there on the edges. We will be running towards it. And no, there's nothing doing. We'll lose the yard, and it's third and six. We desperately need a first down on this drive. There it is for Fred Payton. He gets a lot more. It's first and goal at about the three-yard line. Uh, we might go kind of quick here. We'll open up this first and goal with a, a halfback dive, and we might be in the hurry of just running it a few times. Man, Reese almost got in there. Let's get it off again. Our goal line formation needs to get this push. It almost looks like they are standing offside, but it doesn't matter. Reese finds his third rushing touchdown of the game. With 2.48 left, we tie this ball game up. I think that the defense showed me enough on that last drive where they got the stop, so... We're going to give him an opportunity here late. No onside kick. We'll boot it deep, and, well, they got a decent return out of it, but we have a chance. Let's go ahead and try the blitz here on first down. They're going to go to the air, unfortunately, and they found our man over the middle who holds onto it through the contact and gets four yards out of the play. I'm curious if they're going to hand the ball off at all on this drive. What we're going to deal with, I'm going to try to bring some pressure here. It is a handoff. I was there to hit Ely in the backfield, but I missed. It's up to Diggs to really slow this down. Another broken tackle. Steele finally gets there. I don't know how Charles got there in time. But unfortunately, we are lucky not to have given up a touchdown on that play. Two minutes left in the game. Curious, do they try to burn the clock? There's a sack. Oh, wow. Second and 16. It was Mackey coming on the blitz that got in there and disrupted the play. And I expect they are going to throw this to the running back. He's wide open and oh my gosh, we almost got another sack. It's third and 16 and the clock is stopped. So that time it was Finch who uh, got a hand on the ball as the quarterback was throwing it. And I'm certain they're going to have somebody open in the end zone. Morris gets the interception. Not even a chance at the uh, field goal is I am going to bring this out. That was a mistake. I thought the blocking was going to hold up, but a minute and 37, we have a chance to drive down the field and potentially win it in regulation. Now we have 90 yards to go to score. We could potentially kick a field goal, but what I want to do is try to get as much running as we can. It's going to be a lot of hurry up. We have all three of our timeouts. But we need to make sure that Reese is involved. And that was a great start to it, picking up six yards. Maybe making them think that we're not going to go for it. And now we're going to try to throw one up. Oh, I didn't mean to throw that ball. Then somehow came down with it. I accidentally pressed the button. But believe it or not, it was <laughs> somehow caught. Third and inches. The problem is the clock's been moving. And our circle's open. But we're going to run with this with Fred just so that we can get the first down for sure and get out of bounds to stop the clock. So from the 29-yard line now, again, outside the pocket, uh, I would throw that, but triangle is just too slow, and we got to stay in the hurry up. Can't afford to take timeouts yet. Unfortunately, Fred Payton being a backup quarterback, I just don't fully trust his passing abilities, but if he's so wide open getting outside the pocket, why would I not love it? He's able to get the first down and slide across midfield, or about midfield, and that play... Uh, Stops the clock in the process. First and 10. They're bringing so much pressure. Look at, they just don't even, it, like, pay attention to Fred. How could I not just continue to scramble? This defense has been atrocious. As we're going to hand it off to Reese on this first down just to give Fred a, a little breather, and we'll take our first time out afterwards. 30 seconds left. We're even close to potential field goal range. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't actually know how close we would need to get for our kicker to be able to hit a field goal, but oh, I hit the wrong button. <gasps> Dion Fountain came down with that. Oh my goodness. I accidentally did the whole thing where I throw it to what I think is going to be X because Xbox button and 
PlayStation button, and it worked out. Nine seconds left. I should have taken a timeout after Dion caught that. One little completion over the middle. I would feel confident with our positioning. Or we can scramble with Fred. We have to be in field goal range now. We'll take the timeout with four seconds left. And there's the ice from Old Miss. So we need to get this. Frederick is not a great kicker. I'm not entirely sure where to place this. I think that he should have the leg for it. Oh, I feel like there's too much pressure on me here. We got all of it. We got it exactly down the middle. A perfect kick. There's one second left on the clock, though, but we are up three points in this game. I really hope that somehow they don't manage to score this. We're just going to squib this one. Just a little tap from Frederick to make sure that it's fielded. And all we need to do now is tackle the man. And there it is on the road. We finally bounce back. We're three and three on the season. And we just took out number 22 Ole Miss. Oh my gosh. Another instant classic game. Reese White, three touchdowns on 166 yards carrying the ball. How about Fred Payton? Uh, Grayson McCall is going to come back from his injury next game. But is there a small chance that he's lost his job? Oh my goodness, another one that is much too close for me to really enjoy, but <laughs> I'm going to take it. It's a good win, and uh, I think now we can just move on to our conference play and hope that we continue to grind out some Ws. Uh, we want to get to a good bowl game this year. My goodness, what a game. Somehow we held them to 112 rushing yards, even with a 99 overall running back, so that's impressive. We rushed for 251. Fred Payton was destroying them with those scrambles, and they never managed to make the adjustment. We are even in the turnover differential. Thank goodness we got that interception near the end of the game. Burned them in time of possession, burned them on first downs, and they only beat us passing the ball by five yards. So we did a very good job, all things considered, and uh, it was enough to win the game. Of course, Reese White is going to be our offensive player of the game. He's got that 36 carry stat line for 156 yards and three touchdowns. But how about Kale Mackey? The true freshman outside linebacker had 10 tackles and a sack, in a not just a sack, but a crucial sack on the game. So that's fantastic. But what's not is this injury report, which shows nothing. So maybe our injuries were, were nothing too big. So we advance to three and three on the season. We drop Ole Miss down to two and three. And we can start to work back towards that climb up the rankings as we'll start to sim our way to our first home game in a while against Virginia Tech, where we're going to have a bunch of recruits visiting. And what I kind of expected to happen is starting to happen. Oh, no. Well, no good news. Michael Bay locks us out, which is great news because we really want him as a quarterback. A bunch of guys ready to visit or scheduled the visits, um, but we will lose a couple guys. Mickey Davis goes to Purdue. Pete McPherson is going to go to Central Michigan. I'm surprised that's it. Um, so I guess we're going to have to find a couple of guys to add back to the board. But we're in a decent spot. Three and three. We get to play a three and one Virginia Tech. And the Hokies will be coming to town. And look at that. Corso is going to be in our corner. Virginia Tech only a B-plus school. It's good news for us. Uh, hopefully we can do okay. And we know that they just got upset. So um, maybe coming off a loss. They are stunned on the season and we can do well. That's certainly the hope, at least. Let's take a look at two things. Starting with the top 25 polls, uh, anything else happen that we need to know about? Auburn lost that game to Arkansas State. And we know that, let's see, well, Georgia lost, Virginia Tech lost, Ole Miss lost, and so did LSU. A lot of ranked SEC teams dropping out and we are not receiving votes currently. But we keep winning. We'll, we'll be there eventually. Now, what really matters to me is the Heisman Watch. What happened to our man? Reese moved up into second on the Heisman Watch. He had a pretty solid game. Um, they're saying fumble recovery, but that's just because he fielded a, uh, a field goal. Um, but so far, having a decent season. His yards per carry is worse than it was last season. And he's so far getting fewer yards per game. But he already has more rushing touchdowns than he did all last year. He also has way more fumbles than he did last year. Um, but, you know, 546 yards. He's definitely going to break 1,000 with how much that we're using him. How about uh, his receiving stats? Um, you know, 
it is what it is. Uh, what maybe is pushing him over the top, though, is his uh, return stats. He's returning kicks this year. He's got a bunch of uh, kick return yards, two touchdowns there. And he's been returning a couple of punts as well. So, you know, maybe those extra all-purpose yards are, are what's helping boost him up this Heisman watch list. But that is going to do it for this episode. Oh, it feels so good to get a win again, even if it was a close one. I really thought that we lost when I threw that interception, but the defense held uh, twice in clutch situations. We are able to walk out of Oxford with the W. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Glad that you got to see another win. And if you want to see some more content, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, maybe like the video. And uh, while you're doing those, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as a link to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's a link to the college football revamped mod if you are trying to get this mod for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.